welcome to another edition of Bistech on Ghana Web TV, where, as usual, we are poised to bring you an update of business news that trended during the week, as well as an exclusive interview. My name is Na Oyokote. The government of Ghana has reiterated its keen interest in growing the automobile industry in the country. Now, as part of plans to achieve this goal, President Nana Ado Dankwa Ekufuado commissioned the Toyota Tusho Group, a manufacturing plant company, purpose to build or assemble vehicles locally. On Bistec today, my colleague Amos Ekokofi engaged the management and staff of the manufacturing plant company to find out what goes into the production and assembling of these vehicles. Stay tuned. <laughs> In 2019, the president of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Kufuado, uh, made a statement that before he leaves power, he's going to ensure that the Ghana industrialization transformation agenda is realized. For this reason, Volkswagen was commissioned, and today we are also seeing Toyota Tushio being commissioned here in Tema. On Base Tech today, we are speaking to some workers at the Toyota Tushio here in Tema to find out what goes into the production of the vehicle here. Basically, let's start with the processes that you go through to establish a vehicle here. Uh, we could start here. Uh, starting here, the, no, the start, the yes, the start process. Start okay. process. Yeah. process of the logistic. Okay. Uh, received to the SKD kit the from South Africa. Then to the uh, received to the assembly process. And so. Uh, refitted to chassis bear and cab and deck. Then we managed in the, in the process. Then uh, uh, tightening and uh, uh, torque. Uh, finally, to the filling the oil and the fuel. Then the assembly to finish. And then to the move to the inspection area. So first to check inspection the interior exterior. Then to the Oil adjustment, the tow adjust. Then to the, the check the straight vehicles and the AV adjust headlamp. And, and then to the roll on the equipment for roll on the brakes. It is a, a dynamic test on the roller. To the uh, speed limit is 80 or 100 kilometers. To the uh, dynamic roll test. And then to the brake test, anti lock brake system and the drug test, everything. Then to the underbody check, uh, what uh, oil leakage and the tightening condition, everything to, and checking. Then to the water leak, to the uh, some water is the, 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 the drop to the, the car, then to the check the inside. Uh, everything is uh, all the, okay. The send up and the final buy off. Final buy off the uh, uh, check the, the record sheet. Then to the uh, everything is uh, okay. Then send to the uh, to the Ghana dealers. Then to customers will fast. Is okay. So um, you spoke about the brake alignment and all that, and also test uh, checking whether the, there's a leakage into the vehicle and all that. Um, what goes into informing the decision for you to test all these things? Because uh, obviously, you know, we want to establish a certain uh, point. So, what goes into you making that decision? Now uh, we have the LF and EWS. EWS is a uh, job instruction sheet that uh, we need to, uh, um, to train train to the all operator. Hmm. Thank you very much, sir. Right. I will speak to your other colleagues too, and then we'll take right. it up from there. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Very much.
um, what goes into you uh, producing that part of the vehicle in terms of what uh, goes into the alignment and all that? Uh, your boss earlier explained it, but I want you to take us through again. Okay. All right. So the inspection process first starts with static inspection. Now, uh, static, in static inspection, what we do is we first check the appearance and then the paint for defects, then scratches, and then we check the interior. We check the interior accessories, see how well they are functioning. We check the engine compartment and make sure everything has been fitted according to standard. Then next, it moves to wheel alignment. Now the wheel alignment, we adjust the toe in and toe out. That's basically to make sure your vehicle drives straight. We also adjust the steering wheel to make sure it is straight. Now to ascertain or to judge what has been done at wheel alignment, we use the side slip tester. So that side slip tester actually measures the slippage of your vehicle to make sure your vehicle is driving straight. So what you do at wheel alignment, you test it at side slip to make sure your vehicle is driving straight. Then the next step is the headlamp tester. So at the headlamp tester, we make sure the headlamp is properly centered. And then you also check the brightness of your headlamp. Then from there, you go to roll and brake. Now on the roll and brake, that's where we check the acceleration of the vehicle, and we do a brake test, we check the ABS system, um, we check the transmission to see how smoothly you shift from first gear to sixth gear. Okay. And then we also do the speed test. So on the roll and brake, it actually simulates your driving experience on the road. So you can do to as high as 100 kilometers per hour, even more than that. Then next, you go to the underbody. That's why we have the two post lift. So the two post lift, you check the underbody, you fix the underbody covers, and then you also do the engine compartment. You fit the engine covers, you check the brake lines, um, you check the fuel lines, the fuel tank to make sure everything has been done properly. Then from there, we'll go to the shower test. Now the shower test, you check for leakage, if there's any leakage in the vehicle. You also check for the functions of the wipers and then the washer to make sure everything has been done properly. Then from there, move to final buy-off. Now at final buy-off, you, we verify any defects that any defects that have been detected in the previous uh, processes. If there are no defects, it moves to PDI. That's pre-delivery inspection. If there are defects, they move to repairs. Okay. So at pre-delivery inspection PDI, we do an overall check. We check everything all over again: appearance, interior, um, the functions of the accessories, everything. So we give you as high as 200 to 300 percent checks at PDI. So we make sure the vehicle is in top-notch condition before it goes to the customer. So that's basically the QC process. What are some of the challenges you encounter in terms of assembling the vehicles? Because looking at everything here right now, it looks very, very challenging. What are some of the key things you can point out and say, this is a major challenge here? Okay, I think so far our, our plant is not so big. Okay, we are starting small. So with time, we we'll would pick up on the processes. Right now, we are all learning, okay? We are learning how to put the vehicles together. We are learning the QC process and all of that. So maybe with, with time, yes, um, we would improve upon maybe the speed in which we use in assembling these vehicles and then the speed we use in assembling. But so far, I think we are on track. We're okay, yeah. You are the one in charge of the assembling here. Um, what goes into assembling a vehicle here? Okay, so when we come to TTMG, at the assembly section, we have um, six lines that you must go through. So we have from T1 up to T6. Okay, so T1, T2, T3, I'm going to explain what happens there. With T1, we have our skid coming from the logistics department. There where we have the cabin, the deck, everything on the chassis with the various components. And then we do the unpacking with the help of the logistics team. They put various parts on different dollies and trolleys and we separate the cabin from the deck. And the cabin goes to T2 and the deck goes to T1. That's what happens. Then when we are done, then we move the chassis onto T4. When it goes to T4, that's where with the support of the crane. Uh, when it goes there, then now we now mesh because the cabin and the deck will come not fully booted. It's just packaged. But when it comes, after we're doing the separation, removing certain components, and we move everything to T4. That is where we do proper marriage of it. That's where we put the cabin on the chassis, we put the deck on the chassis, and we do our tightening. Then from there, we move it to T5. When it goes to T5, that's where we do the interior works. 
That's where we lay our carpets, we put our seats, we fix our console, we do other interior works at that section. All right. Then from there we lift it up with the help of the two post lift. Then we do underbody works as well, where we connect our PKDs, that's the parking brake. We connect our engine under covers and everything. Okay, so when we are done from there, then it goes the final state, that is T6. That is where we do basically our filling. And you know, some of these vehicles, they come with the manuals and other stuff, like the jacks and stuff. Get into that, it's also responsible. The T6 people are also responsible for that. They'll make sure that we have the manuals, everything going to the glove box, and the jacks also going to the necessary location. And that's basically, there to that's where they do the uh, filling. We have the uh, filling of the fuel, we have the LLC, we have the power steering, and we have the aircon. That is where we do all the filling. And when we are done, then we move it to the quality control and inspection department as well. What goes into the logistics aspect of uh, the production of the, or the manufacturing of the vehicle here? All right, thank you very much. I am Jonathan and I am in charge of production control and logistics. So to start with, production control basically entails planning, monitoring and controlling production sequence. So we are in charge of um, using operations research and management tools together with some computer programming to make decisive uh, factors um, on the specific models that are supposed to go into the line and to meet market demands. And now for logistics, we have two departments in, within logistics, which is external and then internal logistics. So for external logistics, they are responsible for the movement of the SKD kits, semi-knockdown kits, from the port um, through to the factory. And um, when it gets to the factory, um, we are responsible for ensuring that the various lines and uh, stations receive the parts at the right quantity and at the right time. And that is when assembly receive the parts and put them together on, on to the QC section. So that's basically it for yes. Thank you very much for joining us today uh, on Best Tech. Thank you so much. So you heard him, uh, there are lots that goes into the logistics aspect of assembling a vehicle here from the Toyota Tushu here at Tema. Reporting from Ghana Web TV. My name is Amos Eko Kofi. Thank you, Amos Kofi, for the quick update on vehicle assembling in Ghana. But next, we have Tech Bits with our friend, Winston Amwabing. <laughs> Hello, my name is Winston Amwabing, and today I'll be introducing you to an internet tool called Khan Academy. Khan Academy is an American organization that deals in education. They have a lot of short videos and clips, and they help you with whatever thing you want to learn. So they, they have a huge library that is made up of several clips and short practice questions that you can take. They have experts that handle all these questions, and so they are certified and they are proven to give you the best education that you can possibly get from your home or your office. Teachers can also use Khan Academy to help identify gaps in their students' education and also to help structure their education in a way to meet the students' needs. Let's go to the computer and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so here on the PC we have google.com and in the search box we type Khan Academy. We hit enter and then we click the first link that pops up. So here we have it, canacademy.org. And over here, we can see we have courses here. We have a search here Then we have, you can donate or you can log in and register over here. So if you want, if you want to search directly for the topic that you want, you can easily come to the search box over here you hit it, and you type the course or the skill that you want to search for. Also, if you want to see a list of available courses, you can easily come here to courses. You click it and then you can see we have math that's pre-kindergarten to eighth grade. You can see we have high school and college. You can see we have science here, arts and humanities, reading and language arts, and many other courses. There's also computing if you, want, if you are interested in computer programming or other courses. So for now, let's go to the high school or college math, and then let's go to pre-calculus. So under pre-calculus, you can see that we have the course summary on the left. Then you can see we have um, complex numbers 
and some other subtopics under the complex numbers. So let's just go to polynomials over here for now. And under polynomials, you can see that we have the mastery points over here, which indicates your level of mastery of the particular course that you've chosen. And we also have different subtopics under polynomials. So let's click adding and subtracting polynomials, two variables. So when it loads, you can see the mastery points on the left. You have your skill summary over here, which indicates your level of proficiency as you are doing the course. Also, we have the different videos that you can use to learn. So let me just click the first video, which says adding polynomials, two variables. And then a video plays, it's, it normally has a YouTube link, but this video plays and then it introduces you to the course that's a subtopic of adding two polynomials. So then you can keep on going to the next video so you can study this video. And after you study this video, what, can, what you can do is you can now come to the practice section on the right side. And over here, we have a lot of practice questions over here. So let me click start on this particular one. And in this practice question, when you click let's go, that's down here. You can see it gives you a question and then you can input your answer here. Also, if you are stuck or you're having any difficulty, you can click this link over here which says watch a video or use a hint. And it can help you further understand what you're doing and then come to a conclusion. So now that we've seen how it works, I encourage you to visit Khan Academy, improve upon your skill set, also share with your family and friends and have fun studying. And I'll see you next week. Up next is Biz Headlines. Finance Minister Ken Oforiata has tabled before Parliament a car loan purchase agreement amounting to 28 million US dollars for 275 members of Parliament. This would mean each MP is expected to receive an amount of 100,000 US dollars for the purchase of a vehicle which will be sourced from the National Investment Bank. The papers which have been presented before the Finance Committee of Parliament will be considered and subsequently update the House with a report on the move. Already, Parliament on Tuesday, July 6, 2021, approved a loan request by government from the World Bank to allocate an additional 200 million US dollars to help it fight the coronavirus pandemic. On the oil and gas sector, oil and gas deposits have been discovered on the Iban Exploration Prospect Block 4 of Ghana's Cape Three Points. Italian oil and gas firm, the NI Spa, has disclosed. In a statement issued on July 6, the company said the latest discovery would be the second oil block drilled following the Akuma discovery. The Eban 1X well is located approximately 50 kilometers off the coast and about 8 kilometers northwest of Sankofa Hub, where the John Ejekum Kufor FPESO is located. It was drilled by the Sapmem 10,000 drilling ship in a water depth of 545 meters and reached a total depth of 4,179 meters, part of the statement's read. Now on the current pandemic, which is the coronavirus, Parliament has approved a loan request by government from the World Bank to allocate an additional 200 million US dollars to help it fight the coronavirus pandemic. According to details of a report by the Finance Committee of the House, government will, out of the total allocation, spend 137.15 million US dollars to procure COVID-19 vaccines intended to inoculate 7.6 million of the Ghanaian population. The committee was informed that each dose of the vaccine is estimated to cost 10.55 US dollars. Portions of the committee's report read.
Tusi Goka Ivowi, CEO of the Ghana Commodity Exchange, has stated that her outfit is planning to trade in cash crops and also go international in the next phase of development projects outlined. According to her, the exchange presently presently trades in grains only within Ghana and has 10 warehouses across the country which are being used to run the aggregation and storage of food products. Speaking at a press briefing in Accra on Sunday organized by the Ministry of Information, Mrs. Ivoe said there's a need to establish more infrastructure we can help in trading commodities such as vegetables. The Public Service Joint Standing Negotiating Committee has agreed on a 4% increase in salaries across board for all public service employees on the single spine salary structure. The committee comp comp comprising Fair Wages and Salaries Commission, the Ministry of Employment and Labor Relations on one part and Labor Associations on the other hand concluded negotiations on the base pay on the SSS on July 1, 2021, a statement issued in Accra by Chief Executive of FWSC, Dr. Edward Quapon, said, Consequently, the FWSC has developed a new SSSS for 2021, a 30-day rank-based salary structure for the security services, 27-day base salary structure. It said the effective date for implementation is January 1, 2022. back on the finance ministry the long-standing problem of lack of patient capital faced by businesses particularly manufacturers will soon be a thing of the past when the development bank of ghana comes off this year finance minister ken oforiata has assured speaking to captains of large, pro large producers in ghana mr oforiata said the to be established lender will be able to lend capital for up to 15 years and will not be allowed to take deposits in what will be a boost to the business community. He said, we are going to get a much more exciting environment going forward in which we will seek to address the current challenges faced by businesses. Now on our final story for the week, Courage Mate, a senior economic analyst of Data Bank Research, has stated that the city is expected to slightly depreciate due to huge demand for forex and the size of external debt service, which he said the government needs to address. He said the city is likely to face huge pressure in the second half of the year because non-residents are likely to take away profits that could be reused for investment. Speaking in an interview, he explained that even though the depreciation will affect the economy, it is not expected to go overboard because the country's reserves are strong enough to accommodate the pressure. That's it for this week's edition of Vistec on Ghana Web TV. But for more news stories, log on to www.ghanaweb.com for more, for more. And get interactive with us on all our social media handles. We are at the Ghana Web on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Our YouTube handle is Ghana Web TV. Also, get to be a part of the Ghana Web Excellence Award, which seeks to recognize individuals and groups who have contributed in the development of Ghana by nominating your deserved person or groups. The forms are available on the website beneath most of our stories. You can also nominate via email awards at ghanaweb.com. Thank you for staying with us once again. Stay safe and see you next week. My name is Na Oyokoti.